welcome to another video. You join me down here today on the canal where I'm planning to have my first ever hiking fish of the season now. I love my pike fishing, it's my favourite type of winter fishing, something I've really got into in the last couple of years. Um, so I've come down to a venue where I have been lucky to pick up the odd big fish before, um, but it's known for having a lot of jacks in, so it should hopefully yield a bite. Um, I've just got the rods out now already before I did the intro. Uh, next time I bring them in, I'll talk you through the rigs, um, what I'm doing and how we're fishing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Hopefully we won't be too long until we get a fish. Well, this is where I've positioned the rods. I've got one right there, just off the boot, and I've got my second rod, where is it? Right about there. So I like to fish quite close to cover, um, but not too close that as soon as one's taking the bait, it's going to have you under those pylons. I've got a little bit of an issue with the leaf litter here, which is causing a bit of drag, so always useful to get your rods up high so there's not as much line on the water. Yeah, I'm going to give this cast about 45 minutes. That's as long as I tend to give a cast before um, I juggle the rods around. I'll perhaps put one down over there, throw one down a bit further up. And then we've also got up there a basin, which I can go and fish later. So that's all I do. I tend to juggle the rods around quite a lot, potentially more than some people. Um, I just think sometimes those pike are sitting there and, and you've got to drop a bait on their nose to get a quick take. And I'm only here for a couple of hours. So on short sessions like this, that's the tactic I think we're going to use. Always reel your baits in slowly, just in case a pike's been sat there looking at the bait and just that extra little bit of movement entices it to hit it. Um, it'll never happen now I've said this, but it does sometimes, so it's always worth just twitching it back in because I have had a lot of takes that way. I'll just take this opportunity to show you the rig. So I've got a bead, this is the first thing my lines run through. Then my running float, then I've got another bead, then my lead bullet, and then really you should have another rubber bead there to protect your swivel, okay? Then I've tied straight onto a swivel which I've crimped up myself, but um, for this kind of fishing, it, you know, simple shot bought swivels, uh, swivels, traces will be absolutely fine. And then I've got a little roach, and I've put one treble in the wrist of the tail and one down in the back. That's all it is, really simple. And then I just keep the depth with a stop knot um, up there on the line. I've set that about five feet to keep my depth. Just gonna reposition this rod now and put it a little bit more over to this direction. Perfect. I've now come down into the main basin where the boats turn around in search of a bit more luck. I didn't have anything down there. It was a bit, there was loads of uh, leaves like dragging on my line and stuff. I just wasn't really feeling it. So I've come down here, I've popped one rod out in there somewhere. And I've got one just down the side of these boats behind me. And we'll see if that does any better. just lost the fish, first fish of the session, and it's come off. The right hand rod went good as gold, uh, struck into it, it was on for about 10-15 seconds, I, I think I've got it on video so you'll be able to see, um, and then the hook's just pulled 
unfortunately. Didn't feel like a proper tiny scrappy little jack, um, but I certainly don't think it was uh, anything massive, so oh well. But now I really want one. Well, I've just been flicking a lure around, just for, just for something to do, and I've lost a further two fish. I can't, one of them wasn't even really on, it just exploded at the lure under my feet. And the other one, similar to the fish I lost before I hooked it, it was on moving out into the basin. About 10 seconds later, the hook's just pulled. I think it's just one of those days, and someone's dog just came past and weed in my landing net. There's no need for that, so. I think I've earned a 20 now. I would I would take a one pound pike right now to be honest. <laughs> I like to put I don't mind putting these videos on YouTube because they are a bit relatable. Like we all have days like this, hard days. I thought it'd be way easier than this. But I'm not putting a blank up, that's just boring, so I need to start catching some fish. <laughs> I tend to hit pike runs quite early, rarely leaving them more than 10 to 15 seconds before striking. This may lead to the occasional lost fish, but I'd rather lose the odd jack than risk the pike swallowing the bait and deep hooking the fish. Great stuff. You can see there, there's a treble in the mesh of the net that's that's flying. That's the reason you should always use rubber mesh, which unfortunately I've not done on this occasion, but this is uh, the exact argument why you should. Let's get this pike unhooked and have a look at him. Well, there's our pike. What a lovely fish, about three pound. Uh, I'm really glad to get one after, after losing all those fish. A uh, little tip as well, always keep an eye on your other rod while you're unhooking your pike and stuff. Like I said, this should be a rubber mesh net really. Um, the trebles, look, I got lucky with getting them out, but it can be much more difficult than that. But Nice prize, I think, I think three, three and a half pounds is accurate. Healthy fish, gave a fair scrap, didn't just come in like a, you know, like a plastic bag. Happy with that, let's get the fish back. It's really nicely marked as well. Well, I just thought I'd say something that a ton of pipe videos will be saying, but just in case you are new and you've happened across my video, this is a little tip. Please don't go pike fishing without, firstly, long nose pliers, proper long nose forceps that can use to unhook the pike. The pike I just caught, the hooks basically fell out. I was very lucky, but if not, you need some of these. And secondly, and less, less well known, some side cutters. If you catch a large pike and it's happened to swallow one of the trebles down, you cannot leave a treble in a pike. You cannot just cut the trace and think the pike will be okay. It really won't. So you have to use side cutters, cut the ends off your uh, trebles below the barb and then take them out. Reasons like this are, are lending themselves to the future of pike fishing being single circle hooks, even barbless. And um, I think I'm certainly swaying that way. I'm still on trebles right now, but I think uh, the future of pike fishing is certainly going to be circle hooks. But if you're pike fishing with trebles, just please make sure you got those two things with you in your kit because like they're so necessary if you get a deep hook pike. Look, that one was completely easy. It literally fell out in the in the mesh of the net. 
and then the hooks fell out of the net, which is even better. So happy days there. I couldn't believe I missed a third run, but I left this clip in to be honest, as we've all had days like this where things don't quite go to plan. Well, that's it I think for today's session guys, we did okay, it was a bit of a messy old day, but we did pick up a fish in the end, we lost a few, I missed one, um, but in a way, you think it's a bad day because you've only had one fish, but we did actually contact three or four fish, so it would have been a good day, if that makes sense, it was any sort of luck that meant I didn't get some of them, well, and maybe me being a spanner, but... Oh well, I think we did okay. Uh, if nothing else, it's geared me up to get stuck into this winter's piking. Hope you enjoyed the video. As usual, any questions at all about any form of piking, pop them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I will hopefully see you next video.